uh, first unit is about numbers and radicals. No, so as they have mentioned, we will be uh, going through all these topics. So the real number systems, the power and the roots of the numbers, ordering the radicals and uh, using a calculator to find out the approximate values. These are the topics which we are going to cover with this numbers and radicals uh, lesson. Okay. Then if I move forward, if I move further. So the first, top, first part is the number system. What are the things? You have already okay. So here, what? So okay. Uh, the real number system. So when it comes to real number systems, if I make it like bigger, so that you can clearly see. The system of real numbers consists of a collection of smaller sets of numbers that has evolved over several countries. It began with numbers used to count objects which were used for trading and other commercial purposes. It was extended and refined as a need for numbers to represent parts of objects and locations. On the number line, uh, it became an important. Below is a discussion of the sets of numbers that comprise the real number system. Each of these sets of numbers build on those contained in the preceding sets. So here we are going to talk about the real number system. When it comes to real number systems, then we have to know about real numbers. So real numbers are consist uh, actually of uh, its kind of a collection of smaller sets of numbers. There we have multiple numbers, so many numbers, um, which evolved with their uh, several countries. For example, we have Arabic numbers and uh, Roman numbers also there. Likewise, we have several, several numbers, real numbers. So then we are we should know about the graphs of real numbers. How are we going to draw these real numbers in, gra in a graph, graphical method, that can be associated with fixed point. So in this real number systems, those real numbers, we normally graphed it with a line. So here, these numbers can be associated with fixed point, fixed points along with the number line. Every point on the line corresponds to a number line in the set of reals. So here, for each and every number which we can draw, or mark in a real number line, yes. then we call them as real numbers. So every point on the num on the line corresponds to a number in the set of reals. So all of these points on the line have tangible real values associated with them. So for all these numbers, we call them as real. Then the composition of the real number system. Here we have the composition of the real number system. Basically, this real number system has two uh, different um, sets. So it consists of two different sets. One is rational numbers. Okay. One is rational numbers. The other one is irrational numbers. So the real number system is comprised of two major sets of numbers. What are those two major sets? One is real number sets. We call them as, sorry, rational number sets. We mark them as RA. RA. And for the other category is irrational numbers. Then we call it as IR. Is it clear up to this point? Yes. Okay. Then we have the 
rational plus irrational numbers. So actually when it comes to real numbers, real numbers are the total numbers of the entire, entire two sets. Rational as well as the irrational numbers. When we take all these two categories together, then we call them as a real number set. So now mm -hmm. we should know about the real numbers and the irrational numbers. So for the rational numbers are these rational numbers consist of all the numbers that can be written in the form as a fraction. So, the numbers which can be written as a fraction and this if the denominator also not equals to zero now, we call them as what? Rational numbers. So, rational number consists of all numbers that can be written in the form of A over B. That means it should be, it should be written as a fraction, but the denominator should not equal to zero. That's the condition. For example, we can have 0 0.4. 0 0.4 means 4 over 10. 4 over 10 means 2 over 5. So that means this number can be written as a fraction because of that. 2 over 5. By the way, 1 over 5. Sorry? Yeah it, should be, yeah, it should be actually 2 over 5. Yes. Oh. So, 4 oh. over 10. 4 over 10 means if we divide uh, both by 2, then we receive 2 over 5, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. It should be 2 over 5. Yeah. So, then what else? Here we have minus 1, 1 over 4. Minus 1, 1 over 4 means so, this one is a mixed number. This one is a mixed number. Actually, this is kind of a mixed number. So, we can convert this mixed number into an improper fraction. Okay. We can convert this mixed number into an improper fraction. How are we going to convert this mixed number into an improper fraction? That is um, 4 times 1, 4. 4 plus 1, 5. Then 5 over 4. But this is a negative number. So, again, this whole number can be written as a fraction and the denominator is also not equal to zero because of that, this number also belongs to a rational number. And for the third one, zero. Zero means it can be either zero divided by one, zero divided by two, zero over two, zero over three. So, the numerator can be zero, but only thing is the denominator should not be equal to zero. Why? Actually, if the, denomin if the denominator equals to zero, what will happen? If we divide any number by zero, then we get infinity. Infinity means actually it's not defined. Okay, it's not defined. Because of that, it's not defined. So, here, but here, if it's 0 means the numerator is 0. It can be 0 over 3, 0 over 1, 0 over 2, any number. So, there, then, again, we have already written, is, written it as a fraction. And also, the denominator also not equals to 0. Because of that, 0 also belongs to rational number. Is it clear? 0. zero. Okay, yeah. 0 also can be 0 also a rational number. Is it clear? Yes. Okay. Now, we have the irrational numbers. So, when it comes to irrational numbers, now what will happen? So, for the irrational numbers, irrational numbers means that... Um, the numbers which we are not belongs to uh, rational numbers coming under irrational numbers. For example, actually, those numbers should not be, I mean, uh, those numbers cannot be written as a fraction. 
for example, square root 2. Not only that, square root 3, square root 11, 11 and 1.2013. Uh, seven seven two likewise there we there's not no any end point no so for these kind of numbers we call them as irrational numbers okay oh, like five huh? like 3.14 3.14 five no five means there we have 22 over seven no yeah so 22 over 7 is again belongs to what? Rational. Rational numbers, yes. But let me check. Good question for me. Good question. Wait, wait, wait. Wait. One minute. So, there we have, um, yeah, but so phi, phi is 22 over 7, that's correct. But when it comes to phi, the actual number, actual number, uh, that number we cannot written as a, uh, what we call uh, uh, fraction, right? So, yeah. what's the value for five? 3.147, is it? Yeah. Okay, 3.147 and it's not, um, I mean, um, it's not uh, what we call, uh, it's not an uh, end uh, decimal, right? Because um, it's kind of a continuous one. There's no any end point. Because of that, that five, belongs to irrational number. But if we take this one, I mean the 22 over 7, again, it belongs to rational numbers. Let me check that one as well. Sorry. Five. is rational. Yes. So then your question was quotient of a two integers, no? Yes. Then if that number cannot be written as a fraction, then that one belongs to uh, uh, irrational number. So 22 over 7 is actually a rational number. But when it comes to 5, so normally 5, there we have 3.147, blah, blah, blah. Likewise, so then it can't be a rational number. So 5 belongs to irrational number. Is it fair? Uh, yes. Okay. Together, these sets of numbers make up the real number system. Together, these uh, numbers, all together, we uh, call them as real number set, real numbers. Okay, that is done. Then, I just wanted to clear this workspace. How do I clear all these stuffs? Okay, I'll clear these stuffs. Let me open a new one again so that, yes. Okay. So we did up to this point. Now what will happen here? The rational numbers. Okay. Now we are going to talk about the rational numbers further. Okay. Now for the rational numbers now, okay. For the rational numbers, the rational numbers can be broken down further to obtain the following. Okay. When it comes to rational numbers, now there are what we have. Two section. Natural whole. Yes. 
So the rational numbers can be broken down further to obtain the following. When it comes to rational numbers, there we have uh, so many categories. One is the natural numbers. The other one is whole numbers. Next, we have the integers. Okay, next we have the integers. Integers, we normally represent it with Z, Z or I. So those are the number numbers, number sets, which belongs to this rational numbers. So whole number, okay, before going to talk about the whole numbers, what are the natural numbers we have? That's it. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. That means actually the counting numbers, right? Another name for the natural numbers are the natural numbers are another name for the natural numbers are actually the counting numbers. So they can be used to identify how many objects are contained in a collection. Since a collection of objects has at least one item in it, the natural numbers begin with the number one and then proceed to represent additional objects in the sets. For example, as you said, all the natural numbers. Natural numbers are exactly the counting numbers. That means starting from one, we can count it until infinity. Hari, those are the natural negative. numbers. Negative, no. Negative, no, no. We can't count them. So negative, no. Then what happened with the whole numbers? Whole numbers are again consist of the natural numbers in addition to the number zero. Again, whole numbers means the natural numbers plus zero. Is it clear? No negative. No negative. No negative. No negative. Okay. No negatives. So here consist of the natural numbers in addition to the number zero. Although zero does not represent an object in a set, it is an important addition to the number system. All numbers can be listed as follows. Is it clear? Okay. So the natural numbers are here. The whole numbers are here. Both don't have minus one, minus two like that. Both have natural numbers and the whole numbers. Both has minus one and minus two. No, for the yeah. integers, we have negative integers and positive integers. There we have minus one, minus two and minus three likewise. But for the natural numbers, no, I don't think we have minus one and minus two. You want me to check? Why have you learned that uh, integers, all numbers has the negative one? All, num ask. all numbers. Thus, negative numbers belongs to Natural numbers. See, natural numbers do not include the negative numbers. Also, okay. okay? Okay. Then, uh, that part is clear. So, for the whole natural numbers means actually the counting numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, up to the positive infinity. And for the whole numbers is same as the natural numbers, but natural numbers with zero. Okay, that's that's the difference in between natural numbers and the whole numbers. Okay, that part is done. Then we have the integers. So when it comes to integers, okay, so here they have drawn the whole numbers corresponds to the locations of the number line as follows. Here zero to nine, we can draw like this. Now the integers. When it comes to integers, the set of integers builds on the set of whole numbers by adding the negative values of each. Ah, the negative values coming there actually. When it comes to integers, integers we have positive integers as well as negative integers. 
So positive integers are minus, uh, sorry, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all those numbers coming under positive integers. And for the negative integers means the whole numbers by adding the negative values as well. Okay. okay. So here okay. the set of integers builds on the set of whole numbers by adding the negative values of each. As a result, it includes numbers such as minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5, and etc. So note that there is no negative value for 0. For 0, there's no any positive or negative. We 0, there's no any sign for 0. Either it's positive or negative katawa, ne. There's no such thing. Just 0 means 0. There's nothing. Negative values of whole numbers are used in many situations such as to represent a minus temperatures. For example, minus 22, minus 4, likewise. And the distance below sea level, we normally count it as uh, minus 8 meters, uh, likewise, below the sea. Or a golf score that is under, under par, that is minus 4 strokes under par, likewise. We normally use the negative numbers in our day-to-day -day lives as well. So these three categories are belonging to what? Rational numbers. So if we draw the integers on a number line, that looks like this. Okay? Then we have the illustrating real numbers with a Venn diagram. Have you heard about Venn diagram earlier? Yes. Ah, okay. So then what will happen here? If I summarized what we learned so far, okay, <coughs> as shown in below, see, as shown in below, how are we going to explain this one? The real numbers is here. This real number means normally addition of the rational numbers as well as the irrational numbers. For all the real numbers, we should be able to uh, categorize it into either a rational number or either an irrational number. That, can, that should be done. Then what will happen? Then this rational number normally consists consists of these three categories. What are those? Integers, whole and natural. So what will happen? Natural numbers, we have only 1, 2, 3, 4 and the counting numbers. So the whole numbers again, this, this also included, natural numbers also included, but with the zero. And for the integers, so the same thing the entire whole number set included yes. addition on right addition to that we have minus one minus two the negative values as well. Is it clear? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Then, then what do we have else? Okay. So I hope it's clear for you. What else we have? What else we have? And that part also clear, right? So, ah, okay. One more thing. So, natural numbers, we denote it with N. And for the whole numbers, we denote it with uh, what? W. And for the and for the what else? And for the, uh, what do we have as uh, whole numbers? We normally define it as W. And for the integers, actually I have used uh, Z as well, Z as well for the integers. But here they have used I. I don't know uh, in school what you normally. Z. Z. Z, right? Yeah, that's the case. So they are 
we have uh, for the integers even i have used uh, z so that means for the integers it should be z and rational numbers now we normally define it as R A with the rational numbers and also R also we normally used sorry real numbers we normally use this R and for the rational numbers now we defined it as R A and also another one would be something like this uh, from this notation also we define the rational numbers so we can we can uh, define these ones We can uh, define all these numbers with the, um, now the we can uh, define all these with a set. So that's how we normally denote it. Is it clear? Yeah. Okay. Then what else? There we have, okay, up to this point, it's clear. So, what else? Okay, now we have the identification of rational and irrational numbers. So, here, uh, identification of rational and irrational numbers. So, recall that rational numbers can be shown in several, several different formats as long as they can be rewritten in the form A over B that B is not equal to 0. That means the rational number. So, natural numbers, all numbers and the integers coming under the rational numbers. And also, if we have a proper fraction, mixed numbers and improper fractions, all these ones are coming under the uh, what? So, all these ones are coming under rational numbers. And also, for the decimals also, if we can... Uh, if we can consider those decimals as terminating decimals or repeating decimals. Have you heard about terminating uh, decimals and the uh, uh, terminating uh, decimals or the repeating decimals? Have you heard? No, right? Yeah. No. Okay. Terminating decimals means, so for example, 0 0.25, it's not there's no any continuity, no? So, 0 0.25, only two decimal places are there. So, this one can be defined as, as a fraction. It is 25 over 100. But, but, what will happen if we have like, um, what do we have? 1 over 9. So, if you check for the 1 over 9, there we have 0 0.1111111111. Like this, we can like consider for any decimal place. So the one is repeating again and again and again and again. Mm -hmm. Is it understand for you? Yes. So for yes. these kind of decimals, for these kind of decimals, we call them as repeating decimals. But if there's any end point like 0 0.25 now, for those, we normally define it as terminating decimals. Those are the two different things we have. That means that, is that, that means, is that rational? Sorry? Is that rational? Yeah, those ones also rationals. All those ones are coming under rationals. Oh, no, no, no. So, for the, what did you ask? Like, 0 0.11111, like that is. Ah, okay. Wait. Ah, yes. So, the, okay. So, check for these examples on, uh, so here, identify, so, the question, I mean, the answers for your question is here. The first one. Identify which of the followings are rational and which are irrational numbers, give a reason for your answer. First one is minus negative 1.75. Is it a rational law or, or, or an irrational? What do you think? Rational. It should be rational. Why? It can be written as a fraction uh, and also the denominator also not equals to zero. That is it. And for the second one, uh, ah. Yeah, 
okay with every every number you can write with one denominator no every number every number you, you can put one on the bottom mm -hmm. yeah so every number yes so for example four four is a rational number why four can be written as four divided by one so then that can be considered as a rational but here let me say like what 17 over one Mm, no, no, no. It's so there we have decimals, right? Okay, one point seven five over one means okay, one point seven five over one means actually it is hundred and seventy five over hundred. Oh. So if it's a fra if it's a fraction now, if it's a fraction, we we are not considering like this no one point seven five over one. Then if we convert it into a fraction, it should be 175 divided by 100 or 175 over 100. Yes, because of that, this is acceptable. This is a rational number. Is it clear? Okay. Okay. So for the second one, there we have 0 0.4010347. So, is it an irrational number? It's an irrational number. Why? The decimal doesn't terminate or repeat the same pattern. See, if, it's, if it has kind of a terminate decimal or if it has kind of a repeat the same pattern, then that number belongs to rational if it is not like that, if that decimal doesn't a terminate decimal or a repeating decimal, then it belongs to irrational. Is it clear? So for all these three types of numbers belongs to rational. Is it clear for you? Uh, yeah. Okay. Then... That is it. Now the third one. Third one. Give me the reason. Tell me the reason and whether it's clear. You can write minus 6 over 1. Yes. So square root uh, 36. No. Minus square root 36 means actually the value is minus 6. Because of that, it's a rational number. Is it clear? Yeah. Okay. Then the fourth one. Uh, How we define that? It says 2 over 9. Square root, uh, ah, okay, this one, the fourth one, yeah, 0 0.22222 2, 2, 2, 2 means actually that is 2 over 9. If we convert it into a fraction, then we can, uh, we can uh, rewrite it as 2 over 9. Here, it is kind of a repeating decimal. Repeats, it repeats the two now. So because of that, for these kind of uh, numbers, we call them as rational numbers. Okay? Is it clear? Yes. So... Now, now, we are, now for your answer, phi. Phi is a rational number or irrational number? Yes, sir. Five? No, that part is repeating, right? At a three, uh, three point one four seven. That that lengthier part is repeating again and again. No, let me let me uh, wait. let me. Uh, no. Five means the number. Five. Well, it's not repeating. Sorry, repeating. No, no, it's no. Repeating. So... As I can remember, it's repeating. Let me check. Phi. Do we have phi here? Yes, phi. See, after that, after this, then again it will become 141592. Let me check. I think it's like that. 22 divided by 7. Yes. I feel like it's repeating. Hmm. 
let me let me uh, you also can check five means again you just um, calculate five is yes five is a rational number right so it's irrational ah it's an irrational that means there's no any repeat in part that means there's no any uh, repeat in part though we uh, divide it uh, like that it's kind of an um, there's no any repeat in part as well as the, that is not a what we call the uh, what we call uh, that is not a what we call um, a terminating decimal as well terminated decimal that means there's no any end point so because of that it's coming under irrational yeah. okay Then, is it clear? Yeah. Square root 17. Square root 17, uh, U.S. Irrational. Us. Okay. Yes, the reason is there's no any repeating part as well as uh, it's not a terminated decimal as well. Because of that, it's uh, coming under irration. 5.01. It's a rational number. Because 5.01 means actually it is five, sorry, 501 divided by 100. No, it's a fixed uh, what we call fraction, no? improper fraction. So that can be uh, written as a what we call uh, that can be written as a fraction, uh, which the denominator is not equal to zero. Because of that, it's a rational number. Then again, this one. My um minus nine one over two. That means actually nineteen divided by two. That is minus. Again, it's also a rational number. Is it clear? Yeah. Okay. Last three. Check for the eight, nine, and ten. Whether it's clear for you. So this one is again rational number. Because we can convert this into an improper fraction. And 4.3333, this one also rational now. Why? The reason is here the decimal point, the decimal part is repeating, right? 33333, three, 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 repeated decimal. No? So because of that, this one is a uh, what we call a rational now. And here 7.0100382 is what? What? Tenth one. It doesn't repeat. It's not repeating because of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Then we have the comparing and ordering real numbers. So here, when it comes to comparing and ordering real numbers, each real number corresponds to a point, corresponds to a point on the number line. For example, so here 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. If it's 1.4 now. Positive 1.4 now. 1.4 means it's in between 1 and 2. Okay. So minus 4 now. It's in here. Minus square root 5 now. Square root 5 means actually if you calculate it square root 5. Then the value would be 2.27 or something. Minus 2.27 means it's in between minus 2 and minus 3. Likewise. For each and every real number corresponds to a point on the number line. They, are, they have a position actually on the number line. Is it clear? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then it should be noted that numbers increase in magnitude as you go from left to right on the line. Ah. So, from left to right, what's happening with the value? Value get increased. 
it should be noted that numbers increase in magnitude. Vishalatve. In singular, we call it as Vishalatve. No? Normally, the magnitude uh, of these each and every value, value of these numbers are getting increased from uh, left to right. Then, for example, if we compare these two, one and three, the bigger number is bigger value has three. One and four, the bigger value would be four. Uh, minus seven and minus six, then R. The highest value is what? I mean, the from the magnitude, what would be the larger number? That is minus six. Is it clear? In, yeah. an, in a number line from left to right, the value gets increased. Magnitude get increased. That's yeah. what we have. To compare the magnitudes of rational numbers where one is written in decimal and the other in common fraction form, write both either in decimal or in common fraction from form and then compare. So if they ask us to compare a decimal number as well as a fraction number, what would be the easiest method? We can convert. Yes, we can convert those two numbers into both the numbers into fractions and then compare. Okay, then compare 3.15 with this one. Again, this number is a decimal number. Here we have the mixed number. 3, 3 2 over 11 means a mixed number. What we have to do, so we should convert either this uh, 3.2 over 3, 2 over 11 into a decimal number and compare or else both numbers to a fraction and then compare. That's how we normally do. Is it clear? Yes. Okay. Oh, now we have exercises. Okay. Exercises. Extra for experts. Shall we do one thing? Uh, can you just do only this uh, six questions? I mean, in this class, 31 to 36. Shall I send you this tute? Yeah. Okay. Wait. So only do the 31 to 36. The rest you can do it at home. I mean, as homework. Let me send you this one. Okay, I send, I sent to you, then you have that one, just do only, these questions 31 to 36. Extra for expert. And then we'll move to the rest. Eleven or ten? This one. Thirty-one to thirty-six. Accessing prerequisites and uh, accessing prerequisites and domain restrictions and so on. Real numbers and the radicals. Will you sign the whole tube or just a little bit? Sorry? No, I, I sent you the whole tube. So you have to Is find it? that. Yeah. All so, it's only 12. Huh? Yeah. Only like 12. Yeah, it's only 1.1 is included. Yes. So, yeah. So the rest, I'll, I'll send you.
radical expressions and uh, equations. That topic also we need to do, right? I need to do the uh, radical. Radical? Ah, okay. Domain restrictions and so radical expressions. Adding, okay. Radical equation day one and radical equation day two. Radical equations. Multiplying, dividing, radical expressions. Multiplying, dividing. More dividing and rationalizing, adding, subtracting, domain restriction. Adding, subtractions. Okay, done. Done? All five? Oh, yeah. Okay. No questions, right? I went for three, four. Okay. So... The answer is rational. Give me one minute. Oh, I found your book. Chapter one, radical operations equations. Is this your book? No, oh, that is only for the chapters. Is this the first page of your book? I mean, um, the Canada. In the school, they don't really, uh, they don't really give book. They don't uh, give books. No, there is books, but they don't like teach with. Ah, like... oh, okay, okay. Hmm. Okay, here we have the chapter 2 and chapter 3. I'm finding a proper textbook or something, whether we have, but no, it's not. Okay, no problem. That's fine. Uh, so, okay, let me check. Um, so, you have uh, the fourth, uh, 35th and the 36th, the doubtful questions. 34. 34, okay. 34, there we have, is the sum of the following numbers rational or irrational? Is the sum of the following numbers rational or irrational? Ah, okay. So, what's the answer? I said rational. Sorry? I said rational. Rational. Ah, why? The reason is? Because all the numbers are rational. All three numbers are rational, then the final answer also should be rational because this is all these three numbers are repetitive, um, repeated uh, decimals. No, then you can't means... put the nine as fraction. So, 0 0.3 means actually here we have uh, 
Yeah, 1 over 3 and uh, one, uh, 0 0.666 means? What? 2 over 3. 2 over 3, yeah. Then 0 0.999 means? 1. No, 0 0.9999, if we uh, write it like uh, in a fraction? I don't know how to do it. Oh, uh, good question. That means so uh, there we have zero point nine 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 means nine over ten or zero point nine. Again, that means ninety nine. Okay, that belongs to. Let me check and tell you. Zero point nine 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 means. I'll check you. I'll tell you. So anyway, all these three numbers are rational numbers. Because of that, the final number also rational number. 35th and 36th. Is it clear? Yeah, I put 8, 28, and 9. Okay. So if the sum of... 3.72 plus 12.AB is an integer. Okay, is an integer. What digit must go in place of AB? So, what's the answer you received? 28. 28. 3.72 plus 12.28. Then we have, yes. Then we have uh, 12 plus 3, that is uh, 15. 15 plus 1, that is 16. Yes. 16. Then that is uh, correct. 36. Hmm? 36th. Ah, okay. That one is uh, okay. Right. Yeah, there we, you can. Okay. That part is done. Then we are moving to the 1.2, that is powers and roots of numbers. So here we have powers and roots of numbers. No, they are okay. In on the book itself. Okay. What is the next part on the book? So once we done with the unit one, unit one real numbers and radicals, accessing prerequisite knowledge. Uh, simplifying radical expressions and uh, simple operations and domain restrictions and uh, simplifying radical e expressions and adding, adding, multiplying, okay, day one and day two, okay, you need. So here, I think this power part is not belongs to that. So to uh, get the power part, let me show you. Let me open that book. Pre-calculus. Pre-calculus. Pre on that book itself, there we should have the fifth one as. Chapter 5. Chapter 5 means 272. So for the rest of the units, so you can see for the rest of the units, we have to uh, learn about the radical expressions and the equations. You know? Then we'll uh, go through with these ones. So this entire chapter 5 covers the rest, what you have in unit one. So working with the uh, radicals and multiplying and dividing all these radical expressions and finally the radical equations are as well. So once we completed with this, um, what we call the uh, fifth unit, chapter five, then you are done with unit one. Okay? Yes. Yeah.
Okay, 270, if I move to the 270, 270 somewhat where 270. Are you learning about variables? Like how to add subtract? Yeah, add, add subtract adding subtraction also uh there. And like working, domain mistakes and what yeah, yeah, working with the working with the radicals, that part there they have that also. So here, so now we are going to uh, learn about the radicals now. Okay, so this is it. Okay, radical expressions and the equations. So here, I'll start with the working with radicals. So we are going to focus on converting between mixed radicals and the entire radicals, and also comparing and ordering the radical expressions how uh, identifying the restrictions on the values for a variable in a radical expression and also simplifying those radical expressions using addition and subtraction. So the first two, uh, first two parts will be covering uh, on this topic. So here, if I uh, move directly to the ideas, what we have, the link, link the idea like radicals so what are radicals what for what do you do? yes what? so for those kind of numbers we call them as radicals radicals with the same radicands and index are called like radicals so like 5 square root 7 and also uh pairs of uh, so Pairs of, okay, so this this is kind of an uh, radical. And also, this is also kind of a radical. So radicals with the same radicand and index are called like radicals. So when it comes to radicals, we have two. One is like radicals. The other one is unlike radicals. Like radicals now they should have the same radical part. But for the unlike radicals, they, are, they have different uh, radical parts. Okay, see here, 5 square root 7. Here we have minus square root 7. Both the radical sign, same terms. But here it's square root 5 and this one is square root 3. Those are two different. Is it clear? So for this kind of ones, we call them as like radicals. For these kind of ones, we call them as unlike radicals. Same as, so if we have 2x and 3x, we call them as like terms. No? Because both yeah. are in x terms. So, but if we have 2x and if we have 3x squared, are we telling these two as like terms? I mean these two. These two as like terms? No, because no. first one is uh, first one is in x terms and the second one is in x squared term. So because of that, actually it's not a like term. Same as here in the first two examples, this one and this one, both are in same radical part. But here Radical parts are different. One is square root 5, the other one is square root 3. The last one, again, we have two different set. Is it clear? Yes. Like radicals and the unlike radicals. Okay. Now what we have, when adding and subtracting radicals, only like radicals can be combined. If we have like, like radicals only, we can do the addition and the subtraction. If we have unlike radicals, we can't do the addition and the subtraction. Because if we do normally, if we are doing addition and the subtraction, those two terms, those terms should be in same. Uh, those two, uh, those two terms, uh, 
two or three terms should be in same same type so here they are saying when adding and subtracting radicals give me one minute oh one minute oh ne class ke oya 10 ayata kalin idha ganna 10 mama me 10 ayata ganna 10 ayata ganna hari hari oh oh man 10 ayata ganna so here uh, if we have when adding the adding and subtracting radicals those radicals should be in same uh, what we call the same term but if we have different uh, different radicals uh, if we have unlike radicals we can't add or subtract that's what they have mentioned here is it clear yeah then restrictions on variables if a radical represents a real number and has an even index the radicand must be non negative the radical square root of 4 minus x has an even index so 4 minus x must be greater than or equal to 0 that means actually Square root 4 minus x now. Okay. Inside the square root, we have already learned that number should be equals to 0 or it should be a positive number. Is it clear? Inside the square root, we can't have negative numbers. Is it clear? Oh. Inside the square yes. root, we can't have negative numbers. It should be either 0 or positive. Okay. Then that means here we have square root 4 minus x now. Then this 4 minus x should be either 0 or positive. How do you put 0? How, how do we? I mean the condition is. It can be either 0, 1, oh, 0. Uh, root 0, 0. Oh. Square root of 0. Oh, yeah. Square root of 0, that is 0. Because 0 means nothing. No? To take square root, there's nothing. Then the value also again 0. Hmm. Okay? okay? So here 4 minus x again should greater than or equal to 0. That means this 4 should greater than or equal to x. That is how we gonna solve these kind of... So that is how actually we, go, we are normally finding values for these variables. Okay? Is it clear? Hmm. Okay. Then the example 1. Convert mixed radicals to entire radicals. How are we going to convert mixed radicals into um, entire radicals? Can you do this? Times time? 7 squared. Yeah, yeah. 7 should be uh, taken to inside the square root, right? Uh, yeah. That means uh, if we bring this 7 inside the square root, it will become 7 squared into 2. We have the complete square. That means actually 49 into 2. Okay, complete square. That means 98. Is it clear? Yeah. Okay. That is how we normally convert mixed radicals. So for these kind of ones, we call them as mixed radicals because we have the whole number. I mean, whole number means we have the number as well as the radical part no so then for these kind of ones we call them as mixed radical how to convert these mixed radicals into an entire radicals so for these kind of numbers for these kind of radicals we call them as entire radicals there's no any separate numbers separate coffee chat is it clear okay Check for the B and C also whether it's understand for you how to convert the mixed numbers into mixed 
radicals into entire so you just so you just have to like square the then multiply with a okay. yeah we just squared this uh, first part i mean the coefficient and take it inside the square root why is separate why why uh... why did it okay you put in two two so two very Uh, that means why they have put like this? The... No, next step, why they put like that? Oh, okay. Why did? So, because they have asked us to make it an uh, entire radical. So, when it comes to entire radicals, the complete number, I mean, the whole number should be inside a square root. There should be no any whole numbers in front as coefficient, like 7, like a to the power of 4, like 5, be, be like this, there should not be such kind of uh, numbers. So normally if it's a mix, mixed radical now, it's a combination of the radical part as well as this um, number. I mean 7 or either what kind of thing. It's a combination. So now they have already tell us, told us to convert it into entire radicals. Entire radicals means there should not be any coefficients in front of that. Because of that, we need to take it inside the square root. Okay. Yeah. Are you sure it's clear? Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now check for the B and C. What has they done? The steps are clear. B and C. Okay, part B and part C. Is it clear? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You cube. Okay, that is done. Then we have okay. radicals in simplest form. Okay, how are we going to convert these radicals? I mean, how are we going to keep these radicals in the uh, simplest form? A radical is in simplest form if the following are true. What are the two things we need to check? The radical does not contain a fraction or any factor which may be removed. And also the radical is not part of the denominator of a fraction. For example... If we have square root 18. So the square root 18 is not in simplest form. Why? You can take on 9. Ah, the reason is because 18 has a square factor. Square factor of 9. Because this 18 can be written as 9 times 2. That means actually... Square root 9 into square root 2. That means the simplest form is 3 square root 2. Is it clear? Yes. Then square root 18 is not the simplest form. The simplest form is 3 square root 2. Okay? Okay. Okay. Then we have the examples too. Uh, now check for the example A, B, and C, whether it's clear. How are we going to convert 
express the entire radicals as mixed radicals how we gonna convert this uh, mixed radicals into sorry entire radicals into mixed radicals whether it's clear or not A, B, and C. These three. They have given the methods as well. Just check whether it's clear. The number one method is fast. Square root, uh, square root 200. Yeah. So square root 200 means 100 times 2, no? Yeah. So 100 times 2 means this one can be written as square root 100 into square root 2. That means 10, 10, into, 10, 10 square root 2. This is the simplest mm. form. I mean, mm. 10 square root 2. That is the simplest form. Okay? Yeah. Okay. Then, um, ah, they, are, they have used two, two methods. No, one is from the prime uh, factors. The other one is the greatest perfect square factor. So if you are doing with the prime factors now, what you can do? If it's 200, now 200 can be divided with the... Okay, I'm getting another call. Give me one minute. Hello? Oh. Uh, then I have a class. Oh. Oh, hello, here they are. Oh, here they are. Oh, here they are. Oh, seven thirty. Ma, then na pula ngapi seven thirty karam. Mudha kama plan the. Har, har imang yena yena seven thirty yoni. Hari. Oh, balu a. Haba imam printe ka na ngatte na ha. Kudha campus wahala ni sa. Mata me imam printe ka karega na meka discuss karam na ngapi laban sa tiyatro. Mugudha imam bada adu samay campus se ke thi ani. Har, hari. Okay, good night. Okay, so here, 200 should be divided from all the prime numbers. So 200 divided by 2, first prime number is 2. 200 can be divided by 2. Mm -hmm. Because of that, we received 100. Again, 100 can be divided by 2. 2 is a prime number. 50 also again can be divided by 2, that is 25. But now, 25 cannot be divided by 2. Then the next prime number is 3. 25 again cannot be divided by 3 as well. Then the next prime number is 5. 25 can be written as 5. 25 divided by 5, we have 5. Again, 5 divided by 5. Again, we have 1. Then 200 means actually... 2 times, 2 times, 2 times, 5 times 5. Wait, let's huh? uh, hmm. For the root 100, right? They said you can also write minus 10 too, right? Minus? Minus 10 also. Minus 10? Ah, oh, here. Yeah, yeah, minus 10 also, yes, minus value also can be taken. But normally, if they haven't mentioned it, we normally consider the positive value always. Rather than it's uh, getting solutions or something, now we consider the both answers, positive and the negative one. But here, for the uh, what we call uh, making it... Uh, Mixed radical one, normally we always consider it with the positive value. We always do with the positive value. See? 
the radical symbol represents only the positive square root. So even though that is minus 10 squared, that is 100. That means square root 100 is not equal to plus or minus 10. Always we normally considered it as the plus 10. See, they have given it. Is it clear? We always yeah. consider the positive value. We are not normally, though it minus 10 times minus 10, yes, that is true. The answer is 100. But we normally consider, when it comes to radicals, we normally take the square root and consider the positive square root only. Okay? Okay. Now, what about the rest? Other two, other two questions can you do or... Okay. Are they they are clear, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, they are clear. Okay. So garden is there. Your turn I do or oh, no? Yeah, your turn also there. Express each entire radicals as a mixed radical. So if it's 52 now, 52 means the easiest way is actually 52 uh, should divide it with the prime factors. Uh, if 52 divided by 2, that is 26. Again, 26 divided by 2, that is 13. 13 divided by 13, that is 1. Two, 13. Yeah. Then the answer would be 2 square root 30. That's the simplest form. Likewise, you can do. Uh, you just uh, do all these examples and the your turn, I mean exercises as well as this your turn questions. I'll do all the theories and cover. Then we'll discuss the doubts and the questions you get in next day. Okay? Okay. Then the example three, compare and order radicals. How are we going to compare and uh, cons uh, compare and order the radicals? What do you think? How are we going to do that? Uh, what does it mean? Oh, like order, like biggest, small? Yeah, then when it comes to order means it should be either smallest to largest or else largest to small, smallest. It can be either... It everything entire. Says put everything in time. Yeah. Ah, okay. Okay. So what we normally do, we just uh, make all these into uh, entire radicals. Entire radicals and then we just compare. So 4, 13, square root 13 means they are, uh, if you make it uh, an, uh, an entire radicals, then you will receive square root 208. And 8 square root 2 means square root 192. Then 14 means if we take it inside the square root, that means square root 196. Likewise, what we normally do, the steps are, we just convert all the radicals or the numbers or the mixed radicals to entire radicals and then make it order. Make it to a ascending or descending order. Is it clear? Yeah. Okay, then the smallest one would be this one and the largest one would be this one. But this is not the answer. This is what we prepared. Then the original answer would be this. Okay? Any doubts? Any questions? The how you know which is biggest or like the biggest or... Inside the square root, uh, the biggest number is what is the biggest number from the values as well. I mean, because for all these numbers, now we have square root value, square root uh, symbol. Then we need to compare only the, because we converted all the numbers into entire radicals. Then we can just forget about this uh, square root mark and uh, compare these numbers. So then 208 is the, Square root of 280 is the highest number. 192. Square root of 192 is the smallest one. Okay. 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 Your turn. Do this one. 
So five means if you convert that five into a uh, what we call the uh, entire radical, what is the answer? Oh, I got uh, first root 23. Okay, square root 23. Then? Then 2 root 6. 2 root 6 means actually we have square root Four. 24, yeah. Okay. Then? I got 5 over root 25. Before five. that? Before that, uh, 3 over square root 3 is coming, right? Wait, 3 over square root 3 means here we have, ah, no, no, 5, 5, 5. 5, five means square root 25, no? That is. Yeah. Then 3 over square root 3 means, again, root we 27. have 27. Yeah. Okay, that is correct. Then, can now... You put, can you put negative? Is it possible to put negative inside of a word? No. Negative with what? Uh, like if they put like uh, minus 16 inside, and you can get four, right? Uh, like this? Or like the minus inside. 
Minus, like minus can't, can't, can't. I told you. Minus. Inside the square root mark, oh, there's no any negative values. No hmm. negative values. So inside the square root marks, we can't have any negative value. Always inside the square root, it should be either zero or a positive number. There's no any negative values inside the square root. Okay. There we have such kind of situation. So again, if we have negative, then it would be not a real number. It would be a complex number. You will be learning these ones in future lessons, I think. So they are, we are defining those numbers as complex numbers. And also to remove this minus 1, we replace that minus 1 as i squared. We, we will be learning these ones in future. But for now, just uh, use, just think as there's no any negative numbers inside the square root here. Okay. Okay. okay? Okay. We will be learning how to remove this negative in future with the complex numbers. Okay. Now we have to have the add and uh, subtract radicals. Uh, so to add or to subtract, what is the condition we should have? Same base. Same, same, same base. Yeah, same, same uh, radicands. Yes, same, same radicands should be there. Yes, correct. Okay, can you do these? Yes, do. Uh, okay. Can you do these three by yourself? Oh uh, yeah. Okay. So the first one, when you get like 25, you don't have to write minus 5. You can just write 5, right? Like 5 root 2. You don't need to write minus 5. No, no, no. So that's what I told you here. See? Inside the square root, the radical symbol represents only the positive square root. We are not considering the negative square root. So if it's... So if it's... Uh, if they have like square root 50, that means actually... 25 times 2, that means the I positive two. value, 5 square root 2. We are considering okay. only the positive value, not the negative value. Okay. Yeah. Do the first, second, and third.
Wait, how you do last one? Oh. Did you figure out? Oh, wait, I think I... Sixteen times nine, how much is it? Like this. The last mark of minus 10, minus 10. root C. Yeah, yeah, minus 10 root C. Okay, these are the answers. The last what? Oh. Last one, minus 10 root C. Okay. I, I didn't complete it. 2 C minus 12 root C, then 12 root C. Then the final answer is minus 10 root C. Okay. It's clear, right? Okay? Yeah. Okay, done. Then the next part, apply addition of radical expressions. Okay, now consider the design shown. Okay. How, okay, key ideas. So here, uh, example five, apply addition of radical expressions. Consider the uh, consider the design shown for a skateboard ramp. What is the exact distance across the base? What do you think? Can you solve it? Mm. We need to find out the exact distance. Try to solve it. Rather um, than, huh? yeah. Just use that. Do I use a calculator? Without using calculators? Yeah. Uh, yes, without using calculators also you can do. Tan 30 is like wood 3, right? Ah, tan, 30, tan, tan 30 is actually 1 over square root 3. Tan 30, 1 over square root t, uh, square root 3, and tan 60 is square root 3.
قوي دبي هل يو دبي هاو تو ديفايد هاو تو دو اوكي سو اتس ايزي نو سو وي هاف تان سو وي نيد تو هاف ذس فاليو نو ذس انتاير لينث ذات مينز وي كان كونسيدر ات ان تو تو بارتس ذس وان از اكس ذس بارت از واي so if we first find out the value for x the length of x that means tan 30 is equals to 40 divided by x no mm. then x is actually 40 divided by tan 30 okay tan 30 is 1 over square root 3 That means the x value of x will be forty square root three. Did you receive that one? Uh, Why? So this x is equals to forty divided by tan three means tan three tan thirty means again one over square root three. So four. I use both three over three. Oh. No, no, no. One over one over square root three. See, tan thirty means one over square root three, and um, tan sixty means square root three. These are the two. Oh, uh, What happened? It's the it's an easy question. not that much hard yeah. okay uh, so once you find out the length of x and then you can find out the length of y and then what you have to do you need to add these two I get sick. <laughs> do you want me to do? Oh. No. <laughs> okay. So now, anyway, we I I have found the value x. No, this length. Try to find out this length. Try to find out that length. This way, huh? You are done. No, for the first time I had this. Okay. X X you have. No, oh, here I wrote it on the screen. Ah, oh, sorry. So. Here. Yeah. Mm. Okay, forty. Forty. Why you have used square root nine over square root three? Where are the square root nine over square root three comes? Anyway, that um, one is again. Okay, so what you? Ah, okay, okay. That means anyway, it's go. It is square root three, no. So forty square root nine over square root three. So. Square root nine means actually three, no? Square root nine means three, ne? Same number. Mm -hmm. Okay, square root nine means square root nine means three, no? We normally consider the positive value, no? So forty 
into 3 divided by square root 3 means this 3 can be written as how? It's a lengthier one. Square root 3 into square root 3. I don't know whether you understand this one. This 3 means again square oh, Multiply root top and bottom by root 3. Yeah, yeah, yes. Top and bottom, we can divide it by square root 3. Then again, you receive 40 square root 3. That is the length of x. See, the same answer also you have received. Then the length of y. But that method is too lengthier. You can directly get the answer. 40 would. 40 square root 3 and uh, then uh, y, y means what? No, it's 120. I didn't get you. No, 40 times 3 is 120. Then oh. 120 root 3. Yeah, 120 square root 3. That's correct. But... So, but now this entire lesson is about radicals now. Then we should we should be able to use the radicals theorems to this one and easily solve. Easily solve the question. That's the target. So, we can convert this square root 3 into 1.732 and do the, uh, do the uh, I mean, simplification. But it's not the case. The case is actually we have to use the radical theorems here and then do the uh, do the what we call um, do the simplifications. So they are what we have to do. So again here we have x as uh, why is that? So here x as um, so what you received was correct. 14 to 3 divided by square root 3. But anyway, we can't solve like this. No, if we are using a calculator, then that's fine. But if I keep the length as this, we can't find out the exact value. This is not the simplest format, actually. So how are we going to get the simplest format? That is, this 3 can be considered as square root 3 into square root 3. And then divided by square root 3. That means actually 1 square root 3 we can, it will be cancelled. So that means the value of x is actually what? 40 square what? root 3. But root 9 is 3. Square root 9 is 3, no? No? Yeah. Square root 9 is, wait, wait, wait. Three. Yeah, square root 9 means 3, no? Even now, yeah. I am now getting confused. Yeah, square root 9 means 3. That's why I used it. That's why I used 3 here. Well, you changed it 3 into root 3. Yeah, 3 means, okay, one question. Square root 2 into square root 2. What is the value? Tell me, square root 2 into two, square two, root 2. Two, two. Okay, okay, 2. Next question, my next question. Square root A into square root A. What is the value? A. A. Okay. A. Now, if we have 3 here, we can replace this 3 by square root 3 into square root 3. Oh. So, you also told me that square root 2 into square root 2 means 2. Then we can replace this 3 from this, this part. Square root 3 into square root 3. Nothing new, right? Mm -hmm. Then what we can do? We can cut and cancel 1 square root 3. Oh. Ah, then the length of x. Then the length of x we have as 40 square root 3. Oh. But... This method is kind of a lengthier one. So we can take that value simply. I mean in simplest oh. format. Okay. Now find the other part. The y, y part. 
this this one this half try to find out that half also and then to get the total length you need to add these two Thirty good three. Ah yes yes yes. Then the total length is seventy good three. <laughs> okay, yes, that's the final answer. Seventy, seventy uh, square root three. It's clear, right? Uh yeah. Okay, then you can do this one as well, and yeah, then the first part is done. So you can do the key ideas. That means the summary of what we did for the first half. And then check your understanding. Here they have the mix exercises. Okay. This one also homework. So you can, you can complete the entire. So we have complete up to addition and subtraction part. From your uh, content. We have completed first, second, and third. We have to do the uh, subtraction. Sorry, we have to do the multiplication and division and also the equation part. That's what we have to do. Okay. So 5.1 done. You can do all the exercises up to this 5.1. Okay. Is it clear? Yes. Hello. Ah, okay. Okay. Then uh, five point two we'll do tomorrow. I can continue uh, five point two as well. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, that's fine. We'll do five point two tomorrow and then complete the lesson. That's fine. Okay. So is this it? The particle is like that much. Yeah. So just that's... add sub. Yes. Subtract, multiply, that's divide. Not... Oh. Yeah, that's all. Because for the entire mathematics, no, we normally do all those four uh, operations. No? So what we do is either it's addition, subtraction, or division or multiplication. Only those four operations are there for the entire maths. So for the radicals also, we have to know about these four. There are a few things that the denominators should be converted into a positive. So those ones also there, I, I'll teach you. Okay, with the next lesson, with the next part, 5.2. Okay, then you can do all the exercises or, uh, on that previous tutorial with the real numbers. Well, uh, they are, we had a few uh, exercises now remaining. So that one also you have to do and up to this 5.1. 5.1 also you should complete. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Then see you tomorrow at the same time. Thank you so much for joining. See you. Thank you. Bye. We see you. Yeah, Bye. see you tomorrow. Bye. Have a good day. Great day. Bye. Bye. Have a good day. See you. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> okay.